from PRX. Friends beyond binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I, I guess technically I'm just wearing a shorts and a t-shirt, but it is kind of my pajamas or my like uh, pre-bed clothing. But I was also, I guess, pre-bed clothing or clothing you sleep in your bed in or clothing you sleep. But I was thinking like pajamas is like one word, right? But then it got shortened to PJs, which, I, the, you know, the S is lowercase for whatever that is, uh, multiple or what, I don't know. First of all, isn't it a pajama? Or is the top, like, because what if you're in a one-piece pajama? Like, is it like, uh, so why, is, there's, a, there's a question, and someone will give me the right answer. Why are pajamas plural? Uh, so anyway, that's the kind of questions I'm asking here. Breaking news, I have no idea about anything. And they'll stay, and you say, why, where did it, well, because you deserve a good night's sleep. Your sleep is important. This is a silly show here to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff so you can get the sleep you need and deserve. And I'm here to let you know that. Uh, then we'll talk about some stuff about the show. Then there'll be an intro, and then there'll be a bedtime story. And I'm so glad you're here, because this is a special, special episode, 11-11. Uh, so what do you say? Uh, what, what, what do I do next? Uh, oh, these are a couple ways I'm able to do it for you. Free choice a week. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots. You're hearing me kind of talk about um, supporting the podcast and stuff. And I thought of this analogy, uh, and I don't know if you'll relate to it because people say, well, what does it mean direct response sponsors, you know, sponsors that uh, support the show based on the support they get, or why should I pay for a free podcast? And I don't know, I, like uh, one, one thing I thought of is like sleep with me is a little bit like, I don't know if you have a favorite restaurant that you're a regular at that you go to on a regular basis, but what if there was a restaurant you really loved uh maybe it is the restaurant you love and, and you know the people that work there they put a ton of work and care and attention into the dishes they serve and maybe you eat there uh, once a week or twice a week and what if the food was free like paying for it was optional right uh i guess a little bit like tipping but uh, this is different this is, we serve all our meals for free paying for the food is up to you. Now, here's a little statistic about Sleep With Me. Just imagine that the, the restaurant is uh, full of 100 people or 100 tables. And, uh, you know, this thing with Sleep With Me is if three people out of every 100 uh, support the show, the show can get by and, 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 and keep going. And if five people, out of, so you're in a dining room with 100 people eating a free meal, if just five of those people, and I don't know if you're one of them, pays for the free podcast, the show can flourish. So I don't know if you're one of those three people or five people, five people total. If you're one of those five people this podcast can be not just be here, but be flourishing. And again, everybody else gets to eat for free, which is cool. And I don't know if that re resonates with you. I mean, it, only if you're a regular and uh, you get a lot out of it and you're in a position to do so. We just need five uh, people out of every hundred people to take action and support the show. Uh, and I'd love it if you could do it. Please support the show. Become a patron. You get ad-free episodes. You don't have to hear these messages, but you get a bunch of other sweet bonus content. But really, you get that idea of like, hey... One of those five people uh, paying and everybody else. Look at that. Look at this banquet of lulling, soothing tones. So I don't know. It's just an analogy I thought of the other day. And uh, I don't know if it resonates with you or not. If it does, uh, sign up. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Uh, thanks. All right, everybody. It is time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Helix. And I am back in the arms of my Helix Dusk Lux. The mattress I got matched with when I took that Helix quiz because I sleep hot, I toss and turn, I sleep on my side, I sleep on my stomach. I was away from that mattress for a week and I've never been happier. I love my Helix Dusk Lux. And it's not just me. So many of my family members have different Helixes because they took the Helix quiz at helixsleep.com slash sleep got matched with a mattress that is best for them helix is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences the helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses including a collection of luxury models a mattress for big and tall sleepers and even a mattress made just for kids so how do you know which helix mattress will work best for you you take that helix quiz you'll find your perfect mattress in under two minutes and that'll be shipped straight to your door free of charge and not only that helix knows 
goes, the best way to test a mattress out is by sleeping on it at home. And that's why they offer a 100-night risk-free trial. So you can test it out, see how your body adjusts. And if you decide it's not the best fit, you send it back for a full refund. And like I said, everybody sleeps differently. Helix has got all those different models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep preferences and sleep positions. You know, you got memory foam if you sleep on your side for optimal pressure relief. There's a more responsive foam that cradles your body if you're in a back sleeping position. There's enhanced cooling features for people like me who don't want to overheat at night. And if your spine needs some extra TLC, every Helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped coils in the base with premium foam layers on top. Perfect combination of comfort and support. Setup is fast and easy. Like I said, shipped to your door for free. Helix mattresses are American made. They come with a 10 or 15 year warranty and you get to try it out for those 100 nights risk free. So for some reason you don't love it. I mean, I know you will, but if you don't, they pick it up for you, give you a full refund and Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. If you go to helixsleep.com slash sleep with Helix, better sleep starts now. So get over there, take that Helix quiz, helixsleep.com slash sleep. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It is time for a word from our sponsor, Better Help. And, you know, there's so many times during my day, during my week, during my month, I get stuck focused on problems instead of solutions, whether it's working on the podcast, whether it's parenting or just things I encounter in day-to-day life, even in the grocery store. Focused on the problems, not on the solutions. And it can be really tough to train your brain uh, to not be in that problem solving mode all the time, but to be able to have the resources you need when you're faced with a challenge in life. But when you get that, when you're able to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. And a therapist can help you become a better problem solver, and that makes it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small. I mean, these are the kind of things I bring up in my therapy that week, even on the half the time, it's like the stuff I was thinking about before I went into therapy, but I'm able to talk to my therapist about anything. But normally it is the problems and the challenges or my view of the problems versus, oh, this is a challenge or opportunity. And that's a resource I count on to improve my life, to improve the lives of the people around me. It reduces my stress. It makes my life more livable. And that's why I recommend therapy as a resource all the time to people in my personal life. So if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey survey and switch therapists anytime. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash sleep with me today to get 10% off your first month. That's better help. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash sleep with me. All right, everybody. It is time for the sleepy supporter zone. Uh, it, what, um, what, well, the one part of the podcast I need you here is where I pop my peas, if you please. And I say pretty please, uh, if you support a sponsor, our sponsors are direct response, meaning their support of the podcast is based on how many listeners purchase their products. It's not like that uh, mass brand advertising. And that's how we keep the show coming out twice a week for free, is just those a few people that support the sponsors. So if you support a sponsor, I want to thank you here in the Sleepy Supporter Zone. And I do need your support, especially the free trials checking the sponsors out. We are making some changes to the advertising in the sponsorship uh, to make sure this show stays free for everybody. Uh, but again, please, please uh, check out our sponsors, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. And when you support a sponsor, let them know about it. Let me know about it so we could celebrate you here on the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The next part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need right now. If you're in need of extra support, uh, there's links to resources you could connect with right now in the show notes, including international resources. It's also about being a member of our communities, being a part of positive change, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying support Ukraine, but learning more, taking action. There's links to resources you could use in the show notes to do that. And it's about being a part of positive change, like I said, and join our community efforts, uh, building hygiene kits for people experiencing homelessness. You can do that for free. You can be a part of, there's going to be a live show coming up, streamed on 
Zoom. You could come for free. Just take part. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. Just sign up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. And that's the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mr. Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Posty poster song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mr. Bard. Don't forget, if you get your sleep phones, uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones, uh, let me know about it too. And that, uh, let's, what do you say we uh, slow down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We've been doing, we, we do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. It could be thoughts, like things on your mind. It could be feelings, anything coming up for you emotionally, you know, that you're feeling. Uh, so thoughts, feelings, physical sensations, uh, changes in time or temperature or routine... It could be something else. Whatever it is uh, that's keeping you awake, you know, the reason I make this show is twofold. One, because I've had trouble fall- falling asleep, staying asleep, uh, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. But, well, well, yeah, well, uh, being welcoming, being welcomed in, even those things that I say, well, no, I got to welcome some people. Oh, boy, that's going to be... Uh, a lot of work, uh, but whatever, uh, whatever's keeping you awake, what I wanted to say is like, while I might not know exactly what you're going through, the idea of the show is to make it feel less lonely because there's a lot of us, uh, e- either me or somebody that's listening right now that m- probably knows how it feels or that can relate to what you're going through. Cause a lot of us know that there's some common feelings. That's why we call it the deep, dark night. And the other reason, and the most important reason I make this show is because of you. You deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a place you could get some rest, uh, that you could get comfortable, that you could get the rest you need and deserve so that you can fully live your life. You know, that as you get more rest, your life becomes more manageable. You'd be out there flourishing. That means the world we live in is a better place if your world's a better place. So that's why I make the show. The way I do it is I try to create a safe place, as I said, where you could set all that stuff aside. I smooth it. I pat it. I rub it down. The safe place. Uh, kind of polish it. I, I mean, polishing is a lot of pressure, right? Uh, but I pro- like if the safe place had a, um, a surface that could gleam, uh, I would, But you know, like... Uh, and it was uh, appropriate because you say, well, that's my safe place. I don't need you putting your, uh, whatever that is, your internal fog on there and then polishing it. But if it was someplace open, you know, where you say, okay, don't, yeah, you could go ahead and polish up that safe place. Uh, it can't, I, I don't normally associate safe places with hard, like, uh, rocks, polished rocks, but, um, maybe it's at the entrance of the safe place. I got to polish that up, uh. I don't know, is that quartz or um, something else? But yeah, I could, I could do that. What do you call that? Breathe on it and then polish it. Or I could use some polish. The old turtle wax hasn't come up in a few intros. And I'm still confused about that. I say, who came up with that idea? Like, how many turtles wax their shells? Uh, and then I think the p- pause it was during, you know, like uh, 
do, don't do this, but imaginarily, you know, during mating season, imaginarily polish a turtle's shell. But then probably what would happen is uh, if I was playing that, if I did it, they'd say, what happened to the turtle population in this uh, in the 315 area code? And back when Scoots was a kid, there was like a, there was like a, like during like this five year period. Oh, he thought he was helping the turtles. He was polishing their shells with turtle wax. And uh, it turns out it makes per- turtles very unattractive uh, to their mates, makes them hard to find a mate. I mean, one, they smell like turtle wax. Uh, and it, I guess I didn't realize it because it was during my, uh, what was supposed to be my, I said, oh, that's why I'm covered in turtle wax. That's why you won't go out with me. And they said, no, that's just a symptom of, uh, and I said, okay, well, I'm going to go wax some more turtles. Uh, and then finally the company called me uh, and they said, D- D- it's not, it's, it's not turtle wax. And I said, w- are, is this Abbott and Costello calling me from the big farm in the sky? It's called, tur- it's not for waxing turtle. Turtle wax is not for waxing turtles. And actually they were very patriotic. They said, son. And I said, but it's called turtle wax. And I ha- I'm pretty sure it has a shiny turtle. Like, like at least in 1991 it did. I'm pretty sure there's a shiny, happy turtle on there. So you're telling me that this stuff is just called turtle wax. And the turtle, on, and they say, yeah, it's called marketing. And I'd say, exactly. Like, if I wanted to wax some turtles, like, you've got yourself a winning product. Like, uh, that turtle seems very happy. And I say, how do I make a turtle happy? Oh, turtle wax. Uh, of course a turtle's going to want a shell waxed. Again, none of this really happened, just in case you're, uh, I mean, in my mind it did. All, like, uh, I said, that'll fix everything. I'll feel it. Finally, I'll feel like a good person and part of Mother Nature. If I could just wax some turtle shells, uh, I'll get it right this time. And it turns out I was wrong about everything. And that's okay, too. You say, okay. Oh, it's for car polish, huh? Our car, is there like a car called the Turtle? No. I mean, briefly, there was a car called the Turtle, but it, uh, it was a Volkswagen competitor. It didn't last. Uh, okay. Our cars nicknamed the Turtle? No. Um, I mean, I guess we get in a car like a Turtle. Okay. I mean, that's a stretch. I mean, it's, it works though. And I guess I don't understand why. Once again, branding. Don't understand it. Uh, but I say, okay. And they say, yeah, it's just simple. Like, uh, you're complicated. I say, oh, okay. So it's simple, but not so simple that I should, but I shouldn't. It's simple, but it's for waxing cars, not turtles. Exactly. Thanks for your time. Okay, I'm glad we got that clear. So it's simple, but uh, it's beyond words. Okay, now I'm getting it. Some part of my brain just said that it's beyond words, and you just get it. Uh, and I'd say, yeah, just get it, but don't understand, like, make sure to not understand it. Turtle wax for waxing your car, not for waxing turtles. So this is the second intro, at least, that this has come up. And spe- speaking for turtles, please don't wax us. We don't, we don't understand it. And, I mean, honest, honestly, uh, it probably won't help us with finding any mates or, find, you know, sustain, you know, probably not good for us. If Mother Nature wants our turtles waxed, uh, she'll find a way. So thank you uh, on behalf of tur- Please don't wax us. Also, don't wax tortoises. Uh, don't try to get around it. And on behalf of tortoises, we say, hey, no thanks. We, like, what's wrong? What do we have, too many syllables in our name so you couldn't call it tortoise wax? And also, hey, don't assume tortoises and turtles are the same thing. Even though Sco- Scooter doesn't know, maybe they are. Uh, okay, enough of that. Uh, I, I thought I was, oh, I was waxing my safe place. I was waxing on a safe place. Uh, and then I'll send my voice across the deep dark night. I'll use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents. And we just got caught up in a couple of those because... Uh, I guess I was imagining myself polishing. Oh, yeah, because I was polishing. And I said, well, I could use some turtle wax to, if I'm going to polish anything or wax it. Um, so, yeah, th- those are pointless meanders and superfluous tangents. Not traditionally known 
to help people fall asleep, even though they are, well, actually, they are traditionally known, not popularly known to help people fall asleep. Traditionally, they are. Someone talking about nothing that you could just barely listen to. That's like what puts people to sleep. That's what I make. I've been doing it. This is episode 1111, believe it or not. And as I said earlier, I make the show because you deserve a good night's sleep, and I've been there. But there are a few things to know. If this is your first episode, yeah, uh, you've heard it. This podcast is very strange, very different. I mean, you're talking about someone who grew up thinking maybe one, my all, you know, all my adolescence will be solved if I could just wax some turtles. Uh, that, who attaches his self-esteem to actions like waxing turtles based on the marketing of a product for cars, which I don't even know if they actually need to be waxed. Uh, so. I guess on the East Coast, with all the salt, they probably do after, you know, the old spring waxing. But only cars, not turtles. Again, just because the spring is in the air, wax a car with your turtle wax, not a turtle. Could also be confusing if a pet, I mean, hopefully no pet store has sold turtle wax. Maybe there is some sort of, you know, that's, uh, but probably not. Uh, and then... For someone like me, they say, turtle snacks. And no, no, they say, did you say you need turtle wax, son? No, I need some turtle snacks. Uh, and they say, okay, I don't know. what. Tur I think I've seen at the zoo tortoises, like, chomping on leafy greens. Okay, I thought this was a sleep podcast. You're right. Uh, so this is a podcast you don't really listen to. It doesn't really put you to sleep. Uh, and yeah, it's very different. It takes like two or three tries for most people to get into the show, but it is free. So just see how it goes. And that's because it's so different. It's You don't really listen to me, just kind of barely listen. I'm like a voice in the background talking for your benefit, but you don't have to pay attention to me. So I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off stuff. I'm actually not here to put you to sleep. I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar cuz, your boar bestie, your boar, bur your neighbor, your boar burr. To be your friend in the deep dark night and keep you company, whether you're listening or uh, not, whether you're awake or asleep, there's no pressure to fall asleep. I'm going to be here to the very end of the show. And if you can't sleep, I'll be here for you. And if you're not listening, I'll be here for you. I've been doing this uh, since 2013 uh, because you deserve a good night's sleep. And even if you loathe me and you say this show is not for me, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. There's other sleep podcasts out there and other sleepy stuff. Uh, so check those out. So that's a couple of things to know. Podcasts you don't really listen to. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. It takes a few times listening. I don't really put you to sleep. Oh, more like structure of the show also throws people off. And uh, let me just explain to you the structure of the show. You could, you know, you can adjust as you become a regular listener. Show starts off with a greeting. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So you feel seen and welcomed in. And you say, okay, I got a basic idea for the show, like what the show to expect it. Then there's support for the show. So the show can be free, like uh, versus being paid only. And that's my preference. And it benefits a lot of people and the people that take action to support the show. It benefits, I think, like uh, nine people for every one person. So it's pretty cool. Uh, that, uh, that, 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 that's what I think works best. So having the sponsor and listener support. then. Uh, there's, uh, the intro, which comes after some of the support stuff, but some people lump it all together, but the intro is really a show within a show, which you've seen. I mean, Turtle Wax has come up before, but how many other podcasts are you getting, you know, pondering? I mean, you're confused. You're as confused as I am, unless you're in the auto industry. You're like, you're right. Uh, like, was there a time, I mean, no, I, okay, no, you're right. Part of my brain, I said, was there ever a time where there were racing turtles? And I said, oh yeah, there are turtle races, but those turtles actually rely on their, I mean, they're, they get a number sometimes painted on their bat and their shell, but usually their shells matte. If it was shiny, it'd be harder to pay attention. You say, oh, I can't follow the turtle race. The turtles are too shiny. So that's not why they call the turtle wax either. But it also, I got to shrug my shoulders and say, it kind of works, as confusing as it is. Now, if you're listening and you're into analytics, someone out there saying, like three months from now, I say, strange, when that episode of Sleep With Me came out, 
there was a point zero two increase in in searches for turtle wax. I don't even know if it exists anymore. I, I don't know if that was the one that came in an orange bottle or if it came in a silver bottle or maybe not. I don't know. So what was it? To, oh, the intro. So the intro goes on and on and on to ease you into bedtime. So the intro is not so much made to put you to sleep, but to keep you company and give you some space between the day and falling asleep as you get ready for bed or as you're in bed getting comfortable. It's like a lowering of the volume or some twilight time uh, versus it, it. Now, there is this percentage of people that fall asleep. There's a, a small percentage of people that skip the intro. But for most listeners, it's part of their wind down routine. And that's what most sleep stuff has shown to work is having like 30 minutes of wind down uh, to, to, to kind of set the mood, I guess, uh, to fall asleep or to set the mood not to listen or to say, I'm so confused I stopped listening to you, even though you almost barely didn't make any sense. And I say, thanks for that compliment. So that's the intro. Then again, there's more support between the intro and the bedtime story. So show's free. Uh, That's cool. And then there's our bedtime story. And tonight will be like 11-11. So some wishes for the podcast and a little bit of the history of the podcast. Uh, And then... um, what else? Uh, oh, and then there's thank yous at the end of the show. So that's, that's the structure of the show. It's why I make the show. I'm really glad you're here. I really appreciate you checking this podcast. Please don't wax any turtles, um, except in your mind. You know, a shiny turtle in your mind may be helpful. Uh, was it for the, there was also, while well, turtles in the 80s were really involved in marketing, they had, they had a heyday, huh? Because there was also that uh, Tootsie Pop turtle, or that was a tortoise. And that, but that was more a symbol of wisdom. Maybe there was also an owl. So they were choosing creatures that were wise, where I don't think the turtle wax has anything to do with wisdom, except for the wisest turtles have their turtles waxed in spring, except they don't. So anyway, I'm glad you're here. I really work hard. I really are a nice driver. I really hope you're going to help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to do it for you for free twice a week. Sleep With Me podcast is brought to you by Progressive. Are you thinking more about how to tighten up your budget these days? Drivers who save by switching to Progressive save over $700 on average, and customers can qualify for an average of six discounts when they sign up. A little off your rate each month goes a long way. Get a quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National annual average insurance savings by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between between June 2020 and May 2021. Potential savings will vary. Discounts vary and are not available in all states and situations. All right, everybody, it is time to talk about tonight's sponsor, All State Identity Protection. And that is a company that provides me some peace of mind because I see all these breaches going on, these identity leaks, uh, your financial information going out to who knows where. But I always wonder, what am I supposed to do? Like, how am I even supposed to deal with this? So, like, I check my emails. And I say, I never even heard from that company, even though I know all the information got leaked. And I don't like how that makes me feel. And that's why I'm so relieved to be working with Allstate Identity Protection. You've got to check out Allstate Identity Protection, the best identity protection from a brand you can trust. So much of life is logging into our digital lives. And that's why Allstate developed an identity protection product that protects your digital life, just like they do with your physical life. With Allstate Identity Protection, protection, they'll reimburse you up to a million dollars for out-of-pocket expenses, lost wages, and legal fees. They'll also cover money stolen from your bank accounts, your 401ks, your HSAs, and tax returns. At Allstate, they have been protecting the things people love for over 90 years. Not only will they monitor to help keep you safe, but should identity theft ever occur, their U.S.-based customer care identity specialists provide expert support 24-7, 360 
65 with an industry-leading 98% satisfaction score. And if you've got a big or growing family, you can enroll the entire household under one family plan. Your spouse, your kids, your parents, your in-laws, and all that is a flat rate that's less than you would pay for two individual plans and without the typical age or residency restrictions of where they live. And I mean, if you think the identity protection your bank provides is enough, you better think again. The reality is that most financial institutions act only after fraud occurs rather than preventing it. Having comprehensive monitoring coverage from AIP will help stop identity thieves in their tracks before any major damage is done. I mean, I didn't even realize all state identity protection is available through employers. So you should definitely check that out right away. It is so easy to use, so easy to set up. And once you get it set up, it feels so good. I really feel like this is one less thing I got to worry about. And it's a pretty important thing to worry about, right? Your entire digital life. So when you think about identity protection, think all state identity protection. To find out if your employer offers all state identity protection, go to AIP.com slash sleep. And if not, get a 30 day free trial at AIP.com slash sleep. One last time, that's AIP.com slash sleep. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, this is Scoots here, and uh, this is a new. Or, yeah, it's a new episode, obviously, if you're listening. Um, but this is a new approach. I don't even know how this is going to go. Um, but usually, it's, I think it's been a while. I don't know if we've done, like, a, what do you call them, even? Like a, like a, like a place marking episode or bookend. It's not a bookend episode. But this is episode 1111. Or it's supposed to be. Uh, but I'm recording this. So there's a lot of times I'm surprised. Uh, so I'm going to kind of um, talk about it's a wish episode because I think you're supposed to make wishes at 11 11. Now, unfortunately, it's not 2011. And this won't come out on 11 11. But it, it will, it is episode 11 11 or 1111. I think, but maybe we just, oh no, we passed a thousand episodes a while ago. So what I'm going to do is run through some wishes I have, uh, maybe run through a little bit of the history of the podcast as related to some of my wishes, and then uh, do like uh, on the back half of the episode, uh, some listeners took the time to participate. And so we'll see how that goes. Okay, so I guess my wish is for you as a listener right now. If you're listening to this, this is really what I wish for you. Uh, and when I say I wish for you, I hope deeply. Uh, I yearn for for you to feel valued and seen. And, uh, you, you know, and, and I guess maybe to, 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 to spread that to other people and make them feel valued and seen. And, yeah, it's reflective, too, because I, I, that's the person I want to be is someone that uh, feels valued and seen by making other people feel valued and seen. So that's a wish I have, a desire I have for all of you that are listening right now. And for you to feel safe, uh, at least in this moment, uh, or some sense of safety, uh, whether it's this podcast being a port in the storm for you, or that you just develop this podcast or something else as part of your bedtime routine. Uh, to create a you know kind of sense of comfort in 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 a safe space uh, where ideally you could get the sleep you need. I mean that's really what this show is about, and that goes into wishes. I repeat every episode like I want this podcast to be there for you so you could get the rest you need, so that your life is more manageable. And I probably already talked about it in the intro, but I mean, well, a lot of us listening know how that feels. And that's kind of my deep desire for you is uh, that you get the rest you need on a, on a regular basis, at least like a, better than baseball. Like what do they hit? Like 33, you know, a top baseball player hits like 300 or something. So three out of 10, I'd like it to be around seven out of 10. Uh, that's about when my sleep now with a regular wind down routine. Sometimes it's eight out of 10 nights. I get a good night's sleep. And then if your life becomes manageable, that you could just be there and be present in your life, uh, live your life, take part in it, 
and start to flourish. Uh, that's really what I desire for all of you. So those are my wishes for you as a listener and all those things that come along with all that stuff and, you know, all that stuff that happens in between all that stuff. Uh, and, you know, I know life isn't easy. Uh, uh, it, being human's not easy. And not being able to sleep on top of that is tough. Uh, and I know that also, like, uh, speaking from experience, I don't always feel like I'm the person I want to be, right? And, and uh and that kind of goes into some of my wishes around the podcast and uh, uh, for the future of the podcast is that really like, uh, you know, I make the show, I manage just anyway, like uh, is that my fears and my need for certainty or my default behaviors don't get in the way of the podcast because they, they like that's one of the biggest challenges of the podcast is me. Because it can be, like, really hard for me, just like I kind of said, for, for all of you, my desire, too, is, to, like, to feel okay and trust things are going to work out and not try to force solutions or uh, run around like uh, like that little chicken that's in the books, uh, like, thinking, oh, why can't I, do, why isn't this happening or why isn't this happening or I need certainty, I need to know it's going to be okay or I need this many... Uh, I, like, uh, that gets in the way of me doing my best job and also closes me off from, uh, like change and, and saying, oh, okay, well, maybe this has to change with the show or maybe this has to change with the show. Uh, it's like, uh, I'm not able to see, you know, I, I, my, I, my vision is only focused on, uh, uh, like, uh, n the non-positive outcomes, uh, and stuff like that. So I really have a wish uh, that I keep growing and I can stay out of the way of the podcast and, and uh, know that if I'm just doing, I don't know, this is the hardest part, honestly, is like to be like, okay, if I do the best job I can making the podcast to put people to sleep and it puts people to sleep, that it'll be okay. And that enough, you know, that the rest of the stuff, uh, Outside of that, what which is under my control will happen as long as I'm trying to, you know, create a safe place and, and put you to sleep that every, everything else, uh, you know, if I do my best, uh, that things are going to be okay. And my desire is for me to b b get to a place where at least I'm just like I kind of talked about. I think I'm in the base play baseball player zone now. It's like, oh, if I like and I'm not an all star. So I don't know if I'm. Maybe I'm, I don't know if, if I'm, 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 in, I'm in the major leagues uh, where I say, okay, two out of 10 times I can trust things are going to be okay. And uh, yeah, so let's see, let's go into the history of the podcast a little bit because this is a major 1111 itself is just a symbolic number. But wow, the show has been coming out now for nine years and uh, we're about to enter the 11th. Uh, uh, year of making the show. Wait, so is it 10 years? Uh, so I started the podcast really, I don't know, like, uh, I won't go into the pre, I don't know where I'm going with this. Uh, but yeah, I started the show. The show started coming out in the feed in 2013 in the fall, like right around now, October, I think. So let's see, 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah, that's nine years and uh, 10 calendar years of making it. Uh, is that right? I don't know. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Yeah. So, wow, 11 calendar years coming up. That's, I mean, holy cow. I mean, really, I had no... That's hard for me to process, uh, probably, you know, so let's steer around that. Cause then I start to get a, like a, the old four, the old forlorn comes up. But yeah, when I started making this show, uh, way back then it had been something I'd put off for years and years and years. If, if you're, if you're new to the show, you might not know that, uh, but maybe you could relate to having that creative idea and then being like, no, that's not a good idea. Because that was years and years and years before. I, I actually heard from somebody, I don't even know what year it was, 2007, that they said they found a, in my family. Is that right? I don't know. I have to look at like a, a test episode or something. 
but that was even before, po- I don't know, was that before podcast? That doesn't make sense. But I don't know. But so, I don't know, at some point it, it, I started making the show because uh, just other stuff. I said, okay, let's just try as a hobby. I had no experience in audio or audio engine, you know, none of that stuff. Uh, so just in case you're in that place where you're like, I can't do it, I can relate. And I guess that's another wish uh I wish for you to, you know, not to try, but to have that love and, and like, uh, to have what you need to get over that hump, uh, because it's tough. Uh, it was tough for me and there's a lot of things in the way of that. Um, and so eventually I started making the show and I had a full-time job, uh, and, uh, it was, it was just a hobby and an experiment, really. I said, well, could I, like, I have this idea, a podcast that puts people to sleep, uh, where someone tells you bedtime stories you don't really listen to. And, like, I think even at the time, even the show the show had to develop, this is the kind of end product I kind of had in mind, uh, in my heart, at least, was, uh, I don't know, a fun show that you don't really, you could listen to, but you don't really listen to with stories. And I said, would anybody, like, I know I would like that. And I know I've encountered other people that might like that. Uh, can I follow through on it? I mean, that was mostly my concern at the time. wasn't even will it work. Because uh, I guess part of me, to be honest, was kind of, I was like, I think this is a decent idea that I've been avoiding for years and years and years. And I think it will work if I, but I don't know if I'm the one to make it work. I don't know if I can, fo- I've, I don't have a history of following through on stuff. Uh and so that was my biggest commitment. And, and I mean, I had read stuff that it takes th- like three years to really, and this was back in 2013, to get a podcast to know if you're going to have an audience or anything um, or anybody to listen or that it's uh, like, um, like just do it as a hobby for three years, uh, basically. And um, so then I started, so I said, well, could I make it for two years, I think? And and then there was a no, couple other facts that were useful to me was that, like, uh, podcasts, and again, this was like 2013 numbers, but podcasts that record episode one, like only 50% of those record episode two, and then podcasts that record episode f- two, only 50% of those record episode seven or eight. And then podcasts that record episode seven or eight, only 50% of those record episode uh, 25 or 20 or 18 or something or 12. Uh, and so I kind of set those as my goals, uh, even though part, even though when I was making it, I didn't think I could keep following through or part of me was afraid. And again, I, like there's another wish I have for all of you listening is that... Uh, is that you could have that place uh, and that encouragement uh, or, or not feel alone to be like, hey, there's somebody else out there that feels like uh, stopping or this isn't going to work out. And that's not to say that stuff doesn't work out, which uh, I guess I don't know how long I'll go on about the history of the podcast or maybe this will end up being two different episodes. I don't know. But uh, what was my point? Huh. Uh <laughs> Oh, like uh, giving up, stopping. Oh, that's not to say like uh, that uh, there isn't times to change or to give up or change direction because the podcast wasn't the first thing I tried, right? Uh, And I think that's also important when I talk to people one-on-one is like uh, this might be the thing you make before the thing or before the thing you make before the thing you make uh, because I had a couple other things that uh, I, I felt strongly about that didn't work out in creatively but that led i think those had to but that i worked on really hard for a while years and uh that uh yeah that that led to the podcast also i guess one part of the early podcast development that a lot of people know about but not everybody maybe if you're newer is i also had to get sober uh uh, I got sober, like, and this has nothing to do with the podcast timing wise. It, 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 like the podcast didn't help get me sober, but it just happened that, uh, the end of my drinking career when it really had to end, uh, came just a couple months after making the podcast. And I mean, there was a couple things that were clear that the podcast probably helped me a little bit on the way it was one 
Like I really wanted to make the podcast, but that was getting in the way of it. Like even like, because I was just like, uh, uh, how do I, I don't want to get too big into like addiction and stuff, but like, uh, you know, I was constantly thinking about it. So I'd be like, okay, let me just put it like, uh, like, uh, if, okay, let me just get the, if you re- record this podcast episode, then you can do whatever you want afterwards. Uh, and, but then that didn't, I said, well, let me just have a couple then, and then I'll record the podcast episode. But I wasn't the kind of person that, uh, like once I turned on, uh, it was just, uh, I mean, like, like, uh, when I need to make the podcast, I need to be fully available. And even one or two drinks immediately, I was thinking about the third or the fourth one. But it was also like something in me changed uh, where I wasn't cre- like, uh, e- and again, this isn't based on chemistry. It's just based on, because you say, well, that's only like uh, just something to me changed. And so my c- whatever creative po- stuff about the podcast wasn't there anymore or whatever was, n- I was numb to it. Uh, so whatever. I, I mean, that was just one thing I noticed. Uh, it wasn't necessarily the stuff that pushed me over the hump, but it might have been one little tiny uh, weight on the scales. Uh, so anyway, you, you, like I just so I started the podcast in October. I actually stopped drinking in like Dece- the end of December or the end of the year, 2013, and that did give me uh, a lot of extra time. Uh, so in sobriety, the podcast. Uh, I suddenly had a lot more, uh, time, like even anyway, I don't want to get too deep, but well, like, like, uh, cause I was making the podcast late at like, uh, after work at night on the train to and from work, walking to work, uh, cause I didn't have a car listening to the podcast episodes on my lunch, any breaks I had. That's I was working on the podcast. Uh, and a lot of that time, not some of that time would have been hung over or like the, like late in like nights or, or after work, uh, like, uh, and again, I was a co-parent at the time. So it's like, uh, the nights that I had my daughter, if I got home from work at five 30, you know, realistically it's five hours I could work on the podcast and that would have been five hours. I would have been doing other stuff, uh, where I wasn't, uh, creatively, uh, present. Um, so, okay. So then I started making the show and, uh, like, uh, it would basically be, became like a full-time hobby very quickly. Cause the podcast started to like with shorter episodes and I realized pretty, I don't know how long it took me to realize that I, I don't like, uh, I'd have to look back at the episode blanks, but, um, where I realized, okay, this isn't going to work. The episodes need to be over an hour or I'd like them to be. And I also started off like writing every single episode ahead of time on the train going to and from work. Uh, so in, in, in the podcast was coming out three times a week. Again, I didn't know, like, again, it was just an experiment and it was based on, oh, well, I wish the podcast would come out five times a week. Uh, and I said, well, if I work every waking minute that I'm not at work, uh, I could get it out three times a week. Uh, and, uh, and and then I was writing, at first I was writing three different, st- like three different fictional stories, uh, I think, uh, on the train. And then we would alternate between those three. And then I was like, wait a second, let's just write, let's just go with one. So then it was like, okay, let's just do After the Glass Slipper, I think might have been our first series that we just went to full time. And then... Uh, and then out of that became like, okay, writing three episodes a week is like uh, nearly impossible. Maybe I could write one episode a week. Um, and, and again, like this was when, like, I was literally like taking the train home, like, uh, and then like writing the episodes, recording them, then editing them and then putting them out the next day. Um, there was like no lead time. And again, it was just a different thing. The show's a different uh, level of quality and really wasn't like a big audience. I know there's some people that are listening now that have been listening the whole time, but for the most part, it was like, uh, and there were no expectations. There wasn't a prior body of work to say, oh, this isn't a, this thing. It was something that was being developed. And so I did that for a while. 
And I'm trying to think of the historical markers of the show, making it to episode 100 or, you know, 8, whatever. My biggest mistake was making it to episode 25 and then just thinking, okay, let's just make it to 100, I think, till a year. And then it was like, okay, let's just make it to two years once we made it to a year. And I wish, looking back, I have a wish uh, or anybody else to say, well, why don't you check in with yourself every month and see if it's sustainable to keep doing something or what changes maybe you might want to make to take a better care of yourself. Because that's honestly like a, a wish I have for people is like, don't over, like nothing came from me overdoing it. There was none of the success. Uh, I don't think that's like a, a lesson to be taken. It was like, I was overdoing it and it was probably a part of my personal situation and replacing one thing with another thing or whatever. I don't know what it was, but I would say, because again, like uh, the success of podcast actually came when I pared down to two episodes, and the, it like uh, which I thought was one of the biggest setbacks. It was devastating to me, and that was just because we didn't have the support to make three episodes. And it was like this doesn't like like uh, again. It was like this is only because you're doing it. Uh, like there isn't a support there if it was someone else doing it. Uh, so let's just do two episodes. Um, so like times I've cut back on stuff has actually been the times that, that, uh, the podcast has moved forward and improved in quality, but that's ahead of ourselves anyways. So yeah, at some point I started, uh, trying to find someone to edit the show. I found Chris Posty Posterson. Then we started a Patreon and I said, okay, if I could bring in money, enough money through Patreon to pay him to edit one episode a week, then two episodes a week, uh, I think that's where we hit a standby, a standstill, uh, not on the Patreon, but um, it was like, okay, those were the goals around the Patreon. And that was another mistake I made. And again, kind of go back to my fears and need for certainty was uh, like, and if you listen to early episodes, maybe hear it, like um, instead of asking for the value of the what people were getting out of the podcast to say, hey, if you're listening to this podcast three times a week, uh, three new episodes it's probably worth 10 or 20 bucks to you maybe or five bucks if you can afford it i I, uh, and that was my original plan but i fell into a delusion based on fear and unrealistic expect like need for certainty and i changed everything all everything that patreon and, and all the data at the time said this was a bad idea because you can only get a tiny, tiny percentage of your audience to support you, uh, and, uh, like just realistically. Uh, so that's why I say, well, if you do like, uh, a tiny percentage of people can, are willing to support the show 10 or 20 bucks a month, uh, that can, everybody can benefit from that. But I said, no, sleep with me is, you know, so many people fall asleep to sleep with me. It's different. So I think we could get a lot of people at those levels, but also a ton of people at a dollar a month. Uh, but the numbers that don't aren't based on the number of the amount of money you're asking for. It's just a fixed, more or less a fixed number. And some people will say that's not true, but I've never seen the data to back it up. Like I'd be impressed, like if someone was like uh, getting four, five, or six, seven percent of their audience, maybe they had. I don't. I'd say, man, that's ama- That's absolutely amazing. But for most shows, it's like 1% or less of people are willing to pay to support the show, no matter if it's a dollar or $20. I mean, you can't get 1% of people to support you at $20, but uh, it's really hard to get more than 1% of people, no matter how low you're asking. And you can eventually get up uh, like slowly above 1%, but I, I've never seen it above 2% maybe. Or I don't know. I'm. This isn't a good time to discuss uh, analytics because I'm not good at that. But so I, I was like, oh, okay, we'll be able to get 10% of people to give a dollar and then 1% or 2% of people to give 5 10 or $20. And that'll pay for the editing and eventually mean that I, like maybe eventually I could work on, I could get paid to work on the podcast a little bit, like at least uh, equal to like uh, part of what I was getting paid at my day job. And that was a mistake, a big, big mistake. Uh, and it set the podcast back probably uh, for a while because I s- stuck to it for a while until some listeners, I think Wendy and Julie are two of the people I'm thinking of, uh, 
reached out to me and said, what are you doing? Like, uh, the podcast is not worth a dollar. Uh, I mean, maybe someone casually listened once, but, uh, uh, I rely on it every single night to fall asleep or I rely on it five, four nights or five nights a week. Uh, so I can hear it in your voice. Like, uh, you're, you're, uh, letting your self-esteem get in the way or your fear get in the way of, uh, asking for what you and your audience values the show at. And so eventually I changed patterns and eventually the good news was we brought enough money to pay Posty twice a week for two episodes a week. And again, it wasn't that, uh, it wasn't a financial thing. It was like from other people's perspective, a freelancer, it's like, well, that's how much time, free time I have, uh, to do work on freelance. And eventually Posty started doing, uh, some super deluxe episodes. And then we found Carl W who, um, would edit an episode, would edit an episode a week, uh, and eventually I found out, like, with my day job and just like, okay, like, and need, need sponsors. If I want to, like, uh, I don't know, making the podcast sustainable, I don't know if I want to get caught up in that, to be honest with you. Because, again, it gets into my needs get in the way of all this. Uh, and it's just confusing, like, making something free and then giving it away uh, or having it be sponsor-supported and listener-supported. uh it's, uh, especially for somebody like me, I guess it's a constant growth opportunity. So even talking about it, I'm kind of feeling myself feeling like shut down a little bit. Um, and I guess like, that's like, uh, part of my growth is like saying, man, like, uh, at the same time, like, uh, as hard as it's been, I've been able to make the show and sustain the show. So my wish, I guess is coming true right now is I really am grateful for that fact, uh, that those people came in and supported the show. Those of you, some of you that are listening, that have been there since the beginning and I was able to pay Posty and then have Carl and that help uh, cleared up more creative space for the show. And then I was able to pay, uh, like uh, for other stuff. And, and then I was able to like slowly cut back on my job, uh, I don't know if it, I cut back over two years or a year. I can't remember anymore. But where between the kind of the particularly at the time, the Patreon support and then the sponsor support, it was like I was able to save an emergency fund. That's what I did first uh, and then tried to figure out health insurance. And then, uh, well, I guess I got practice doing that because it was like, OK, like uh, if I'm only working half time, I know how much I'm going to have to pay. I had to pay for half my insurance, I think. Maybe or like once I went from three quarter time to half time, I don't know. But then when I was half time at work, uh, like working twenty hours a week uh, or twenty four, maybe I can't remember. But whatever, like uh, where I was like, okay, then how much is like independent insurance going to cost me or whatever from um, the exchange, California exchange? Uh, and then yeah, then I was able to kind of transition from my job to working on the podcast full time, and eventually like. Uh, try to trim the podcast to where it is sustainable, where I'm trying to be as healthy as I can and set a good example and be available and not overdo it and, and ask for help and get help where I can and, and uh, pay the people that pay people that are involved with the podcast. So man, I guess it comes back to wishes is like, uh, in some sense, my wish came true that I like said, what can I try to do this idea? Will it work? Yeah. And it worked big because, uh, other people out there were willing to help and, and they got something out of it uh, and it, it helped people and it did help like uh, make people feel less alone in the deep dark night. And it's helped me feel less alone in the deep dark night of my mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, so yeah, but enough about me. Let's get to these listener. If I can find it, uh, the listener wishes here. Okay. Let me see. Okay. So what's your wish? Oh, 54 comments. Cool. Um, oh, I lost it. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right, so let's start a bedtime story here uh, where Susan, once upon a time, said, My wish for sleep with me to be a reliable and secure way to Drew to make a nice living as long as he wants to be. 
And, uh, yeah, that's uh, something I wish too. It's like, uh, and, and that's sleeping me. I guess those are kind of the wishes I didn't share. Cause I, it's like, yeah, be in other languages or maybe other people doing versions of it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I don't know. But, um, and again, I guess that's like my part of it is my own perspective too. It's like, Oh, I get to work on this show. It's trying to find that balance between, uh, What's under my control and what isn't? Thanks, Susan. And Robert says, all those ones in a row look like hands knocking on a door. I'd like to see a new deep dive into collecting knots, knocks as of someone rapping gently at my chamber door. Yeah, I think we have a couple of knock. I, no, I, I think we have a knock episode coming out. Uh, I don't know if we do. It's something knock related, uh, Robert. And oh, that's knock. Uh, you know, I explain it. I think it comes out in the holidays. Uh, is of me uh, and my dog Koa. We listen to recorded knocks as our hobby, and uh, you find some of those shows in the archives. If you just search for K N O C K S, uh, there should be a few in there. And then if you're a 10 or $20 patron, you definitely get access to all of them. Uh, yeah, those are uh, fun episodes. Janet would like Ray to meet and shawl Nana. I think they would make a lovely couple. Yeah, I guess, uh, I don't think uh, Ray, uh, Ray, I think Ray kind of is an example. So Ray, the Ray, Ray's uh, my neighbor, and he comes on uh does shows we're getting ready to do, oh but i don't know if it'll come out before or after this uh ray is supposed to do a halloween themed show for us so uh yeah and uh so yeah and, and i don't know if, like uh nana doesn't really uh i don't think nana really fit uh, nana's never had her own episode that i know of has she though Trying to think of what I recorded. It's hard for me because I record episodes three or four months out. And then this one is like, I'm recording it a little bit sooner. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Nana get, does get some, oh, wait, I thought there was one with Nana in the title. Uh, oh yeah. Nana's, uh, Bartlett's quote of Nana's, uh, quotations, Bar Nana's Bar Bartlett's book of quotations. Did that already come out? I don't think so, but that's scheduled, uh, Janet. Uh, Pete says, if you could do one page of an old toy catalog. Uh, yeah, we, we actually, we have a toy catalog episode. I think I replied to that. That was recorded, uh, and that'll come out in the holiday season. And we've been doing those uh, um, magic episodes, which are kind of similar. Uh Charlotte asks another random podcast time capsule episode uh, where you pick episode titles at random and make up a story. Yeah, we did that, Charlotte, with one of the live shows, the 20, what year is it, 2022 live shows? Don't know if it was streamed or recorded, though, um, but I'll have to take a look. Uh, but yeah, those are fun to use the uh, old episode titles. Okay, then Steven says the old catalog. Uh, we yeah we we did do that. Uh, buddy, 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 cat. Uh, that's from cat. Uh, and uh, cat cat also even made a shirt that says that. Uh, and uh, what would it be like if a few of the characters met up in a coffee shop? Uh, I, don't know, I don't even know. I don't know if I have a lot of the character. I don't know if I have the ability. Super doll was one of the ones that taught me the limits of having, um, like, uh, like that sleep with me is best when it's like a pair of characters interacting. Um, but yeah, two characters could be at a coffee shop. Uh, I don't know if Bernie, Bernie and Ray's their voices are a little too similar. So it'd be confusing for people. Um, Oh, and then it'd be funny to hear them commenting on how I've written their stories. It'd be funny for, um, uh, after the glass slipper, I think, uh, Agatha and Lady Witchbeard, I'm sure they'd have a lot of comments about it. Uh, Lisa Michelle also knock, 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 shout out, uh, on a listener's door. 
Stanley wants to bring back Kiwi Shavers. Uh, Kiwi Shavers is, uh, uh, the podcast gets like, there's a negativity that comes our way on a regular daily basis. And I don't even know if it was that a public episode, but Kiwi Shavers uh, was one of the most emails I've ever gotten, non-positive. Like always the non-positive stuff usually. Like we get regular nice stuff on a regular basis too, so it's not to say that, but uh, the concentrated stuff is always non-positive, and that was one of the most non-positive ones. I think there was like only one or two other times where there was like a promo or for, for a show or something. Uh, but, uh, yeah. So Kiwi Shavers, Stanley will only make it back as a Patreon. Uh, I could work out a Patreon episode, maybe, maybe next summer when I'm where Kiwi Shavers was, but Kiwi Shavers was just a, uh, Australian accented, uh, adventurer named Kiwi Shavers. And he had a saying, I'm trying to think, uh, Let's go. It was kind of like, let's go Kiwi shavers. Uh, that was the kind of rhyme of it. Uh, I don't even know what the content was because I haven't listened to an episode in a long time, but it was a fun episode. I remember recording that episode and having tons of fun, but I don't think that's what most of the listeners, uh, especially on the free feed are looking for is me having fun. Uh, um, so yeah. Uh, let's see. Catalog idea. Wendy likes that. Maybe the Archie McPhee toy catalog. You have to download that and check it out. Yeah. Uh, Brittany gives a catalog a shout out. Uh, let's see. E. Margaret says a Roy, appearance from Roy G. Biv Institute would be awesome. Yeah, it would be. I, ha- I don't think, I think all the holiday, I have to put that down maybe for 2023. Or, um, um, I'm trying to think of what other things Roy G. B. Roy G. Biv Institute. I mean, maybe we could do something about rainbows. Um, but yeah, I think all of 2022, other than this episode and Ray's episode is recorded. Uh, I think, uh, knock, knock on wood. Oh, maybe a couple nuns in space episodes. Uh, um, yeah, I, I think. But yeah, Reggie Biv, that's always interesting. Uh, Cornelia uh, and Snow, like uh, personal episodes. It's hard for me to know the personal episodes until they come out because I'm recording so much. Uh, but I think probably the Nana's book, I'm trying to, I have no, yeah, I guess I don't have the list of episodes in front of me that have been recorded, but I, I know we have like, uh, um, so, yeah, I don't know what I have coming up, but I'm sure there's personal episodes recorded. Um, Heidi says, maybe Ray reading a catalog. Um, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe. I'd have to take a look at that. Uh, I mean, Ray, uh, see, I have one Ray episode scheduled to be recorded, and then Ray's Father's Day for next year is already recorded uh, for 2023. Uh, Stacy would love old holiday catalog, Christmas catalog. Um, let's see. Chris uh, wanted uh, uh, access to all the um, old Game of Thrones episodes. Those are actually, uh, Chris is a $10 patron, so they're actually in the $10 feed, including a couple all-night episodes. Uh, and then, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not able to take a request for TV recaps. If I ever am in a position to do so, I'll put it out to patrons. Um, but it's just that, again, it's, our planning goes so far out uh, that uh, um, it's just, I, and I get so many different TV requests. And again, it's like, uh, for me, I have to watch the episode three or four times. So I'm not able to take any TV requests, uh, but those are cool ideas, Chris. Uh, um, you know, oh, and Chris did want to talk about, but there is a Angel Lansbury themed episode that probably came out before this episode, uh, where I came up with the idea for Angel Lansbury con. Originally I thought it would be cool to cosplay at it, but then I got kind of got it lost on, uh, doing a history of, uh, Angel Lansbury roles, uh, and, uh, but, uh, 
I guess like it'd be cool to go to, I, I think it'd be a part of like another, like, I think, I think that was another episode where I was like, oh, let's have some cons inside of cons. Uh, particularly there's just a movie with, uh, like a gaming con in there. I can't remember what movie it was. Uh, it was like video game characters. I don't know. Was it an old movie? I was rewatching. Wasn't Sonic Two, but not important. Um, let's see. Uh, Bernie the Butterfly. Yeah, Bernie. I don't. I don't think I have any Bernie episodes recorded. Uh, Ted says uh, Bear with the comic uh, comment on its belly redo. Maybe you could re-release those. I thought we have re-released them before. Um, I mean, those should all be in the patron feed. We haven't really done any redos of episodes. I've been meaning to do episode one redo. Um, probably like for patrons or something, or maybe for the free feed. So I don't know if that's something we could do eventually. And Kathy loves the Trader Joe's Fearless Flyer episodes. Yeah, those still come out in the, um, occasionally... Like depending on the health, like uh, the health of the Patreon and stuff like that, uh, on um, on uh, what is that thing called? Uh, Patreon uh, and the ten and twenty dollar feeds, and there's a lot in even the five dollar feed. Uh, and then I might do one for the October live show. Humphrey says, uh, catalogs are TNGs, TNG. Yeah, we have the catalog episodes recorded and then we have TNG on the schedule, uh, but not in the, not like in the 2023 schedule, but no episodes recorded at this point. Um, let's see. Snow says, uh, Ray meets someone at a theme park. Uh, yeah. So kind of more specific episode ideas. Um, which is hard. I, I'm not a, like a, yeah. It's like a, but yeah. Ray Ray has met some people had people at theme parks and had fun, have dinner together. Uh, sounds like an early Ray episode actually. Snow. Uh, uh, Ray Ray uh, yeah. Ray Ray's so friendly that uh, he he has such an easy job making uh, connection with other people. Uh, let's see. Uh, L says, uh, the personal stories. Yeah. I think we have, um, again, I, maybe I could look if I have a chance. Oh no, none of my devices will look up that, uh, where we keep all the episodes that I've recorded. I mean, hey, can't look in. Let's see. I want to get through all these. So, um, Clara, Clara says, uh, I wish for another board game unboxing. There is one recorded don't think it's scheduled for this year. I think it's a 2023 episode. It's a, a two, oh no, it's an unboxing of one game and then a bunch of uh, stuff from another gaming company. So that's coming up. I just don't think, uh, I don't know. There's a couple, uh, what are we in, August? Uh, I don't know what the openings are. It could be coming out this year, Clara, 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 sorry. Um, yeah. Constance says, love hearing Scooter's personal stories, but uh, I hope that no matter what, how much tension we hold or interest we have, we ex exhale and uh, drift off into deep slumber. Uh, thanks, Constance. Yeah, let's kind of share that wish. Uh uh, but I mean, it is an important reminder, like there is a percentage of people that listen to the show and I'm glad you're, I'm here with me you right now, uh, that can't sleep, uh, or that need a break during the day. And that's, the show's kind of also designed with them in mind to keep everybody company. Not that I'm not, not that you were saying that Constance, but, uh, if you can't sleep, I just want you to know, like, uh, there is no pressure to fall asleep. I'm going to be here to the very end for you. And I think that helps the people that are relaxed in a deep slumber in some sense. Alexander says, personal story, uh, be cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think I've got a couple coming up. Uh, let's see, Stacy would like, a, this is kind of a more specific, like episode about Speed Racer, uh, and then the one involving Count Chocula, uh, and then... Uh, both uh, Stacy and Mars wish for peace. Uh, 
um, throughout the world, uh, and in specific places too, um, and sending our love to everybody in the Ukraine. Um, yeah, I haven't had any visits from any serial uh, people lately, uh, Stacy. But, uh, yeah, uh, have to check it out at some point. Um, and then, yeah, Speed Racer, again, it's just hard for me to, uh, it's, it's not possible for me to take, uh, TV show suggestions. I mean, at some point, if I, if there's like a, like I was in a position to do so, I'd put it out to everybody. Elizabeth says another season of Otter Things or something similar. Uh, yeah, I'd I'd do that um at some point. I um the first half of 2023 we have something our new series after Nuns in Space uh, scheduled uh and I'm not sure about the back half of 2023 at um let's see Lenny or Lenny says I'd like a episode featuring oh me out of breath with uh, cool hit on my face. That's kind of a personal story uh uh, uh, constantly out of breath, uh, sharing stories, uh, Alexander loves trending Tuesdays. They'll still come out every third episode, Alexander. We just don't call them trending Tuesday episodes anymore. Um, I wish for something like the robes fashion show episode. Those, uh, I think that comes up again as the, uh, with the Kuzak family. And yeah, like regular characters, they usually record two or three episodes a year, um, like a robes fashion show and stuff. Not sure if, again, I'm not sure if they've recorded anything. Like, uh, I know there's a spelling bee episode and, uh, a Bartlett's quotations from Nan episode. I don't know if the Kuzaks were involved in either one of those. And they may have been at one of the live shows, but I'm not sure. Get them not that, but, uh, yeah. Uh, Lauren would love to hear a story about, uh, Scoots as a kid in the great outdoors. Uh, Paul would like the etymology of supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Uh, yeah. And even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious, uh, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Marie would like to hear, uh, to library and talk about books. Uh, I always read before bed. Yeah, me too. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'd like to go to, I, I'm trying to get access to, uh, some of the couple different archives, uh, but I haven't heard back from me those places. Uh, uh, and then uh, more real time recipe episodes. Yeah, I'm, I, I've ran out of recipes as a problem. And I think our writing, like, we're not in a position to uh, pay for recipes right now. Um, and we don't do any non paid work for this podcast. Uh, so as I develop more recipes, I'll do more real time recipe episodes. It's just a matter of. Um, can't use, I don't want to use anybody else's recipes unless they're being compensated. Um, yeah. And this is Debbie says, yeah, Kuzag, 20 step skin, skin, skin care. Uh, and the robes one are some people's favorites, uh, including, uh, Debbie's. Yeah. Those are fun. Uh, Raina says, uh, Maybe a show with Antonio Banderas and Carol King as guests. Uh, more from the Boredom Institute. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the Boredom Institute. I pitched somebody on that, um, like a sponsor or something, or something. Or maybe we didn't. I can't remember. Didn't get like in the same with. Uh, uh, we don't have any guests on the show. Uh, even the fake guests we have, I get angry emails about. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. And, uh, let's see. Mary says, uh, I don't know if I understood the prompt. Uh, Mr. Turtle pool filled with rare beanie babies. Uh, uh, something specific as an element that could pop up in a show. It just did. Uh, very random. Uh, that's how it works. I'm new here. Thanks, Mary. And thanks to everybody for your wishes. Uh, 
and uh, your, all your wishes got into a podcast. I can't make it. I mean, I'm not really in a place to be able to make it. We don't, you know, it's just hard with the show. Maybe you heard it because of all the distance planning we do that we can't take episode submissions. So this was a fun way to do it, I guess, because uh, uh, I normally can't uh, do it uh, with regular episodes, but it's fun. Uh, and yeah, couldn't have made it to 1111 without any of you. Uh, even if you're new, uh, the, the show that way, cause I knew like maybe the podcast would be there waiting for somebody to discover it. Even when it was early on, it was like, uh, you know, you, you kind of, as a fan, that's another thing I tell people. And I wish for you as a fan of stuff to be like, well, I want to make something. I'm a fan of this. Uh, you don't really like, uh, have to, to, to do the same thing as what you're a fan of, but it's like, oh, I want to make this experience for someone else, uh, for it to be waiting to be discovered. Uh, and that's kind of like a wish I have, uh, for the people out there that are listening now or listening one day that is sleeping me is waiting for you to be waiting for you to discover it. Hopefully you like you feel seen and welcomed in to like a kind of virtual safe place where you could get the rest you would need. You could breathe, uh, and you I can take your mind off stuff and keep you company so that you could fall asleep. Uh, it's made a lot of my w- wishes I never even would have known to have come true. So thank you so much, uh, everybody. All right. I'm going to thank a couple more patrons that uh, wrote testimonials to Sue podcast really does uh, lull me to sleep like nothing else when i can't listen at bedtime i say the words to the intro to myself and it triggers a relaxation response it's crazy effective i love your creativity and sense of humor as a result i go to sleep with a smile in my heart i decided to support this podcast so because i want to encourage you to keep on creating thank you and when this is paraphrasing uh, but uh I feel empowered and knowing I support a positive community service and that rel- that well-rested space to make the world a better place. And then Lauren uh, wrote, uh, I've struggled with insomnia my whole life and uh, sleeping may really changed the way I felt about going to bed. Something to look forward to instead of dread. I think what Scooter is doing is important and unique and I wanted him to be able to keep doing it. Uh, so I became a patron Hopefully, I'll be able to move up a tier and pay more someday. I love the Trader Joe's episodes of lack of ads. Sometimes listen with the ads, but it's not, uh, oh, they're not particularly intrusive, but it's nice not to have them. And I mostly subscribe because I believe in what Scooter's doing and to get rid of the ads. And it felt amazing supporting the show because I was able to help Scooter help people by keeping the podcast free for everybody. So thanks, uh, everybody who supports the show directly and supports our sponsors. That's how we're able to be free here twice a week. Uh, and we grow as a podcast in a free way to support the show or podcasting in general. So just spread the word about the podcast. Um, you don't have to uh, do much more than that. Just uh, let people know about the show. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks so much. And here's a couple of Tuck You In sponsors that enabled us to uh, grow the archives. Uh, thanks. All right, everybody, it's Scoots here, and it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp. And I don't know if you're anything like me, but uh, you've heard me talk about this before. A lot of times I'm focused on problems and not solutions, whether it's with the podcast, whether it's at the grocery store, with my car, in, interpersonal stuff. I'm, I'm never focused. You, you know what I mean? I'm always thinking, oh, boy, how's... Uh, so it can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when you're faced with a challenge in life, and and to see those challenges as opportunity. I mean, really, a lot of times I yeah I even roll my eyes when I say when my therapist says, "Well, maybe this is an opportunity." But when you learn to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. When you really when I when I can only speak for me though, when I find that thing and I say, "Wait a second, this is a chance for me to grow," and I get that through my work with my therapist. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver and that makes it easier to accomplish your goals no matter how big or small. And it's something I get to work on every single week. Uh, And it helps me to flourish. It positively impacts the people in my life. 
and it's a resource I would not want to do without. It's, that's one of the reasons I try to recommend therapy to people in my personal life uh, as a resource, too. So if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists anytime. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash sleep with me to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash sleep with me. Check it out. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. It's Scoots here, and it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp. And I don't know if you're anything like me, but uh, you've heard me talk about this before. A lot of times I'm focused on problems and not solutions, whether it's with the podcast, whether it's at the grocery store, with my car, in, interpersonal stuff. I'm, I'm never focused. You, you know what I mean? I'm always thinking, oh boy, how's... Uh, so it can be tough to train your brain to stay in problem-solving mode when you're faced with a challenge in life. And, and to see those challenges as opportunity. I mean, really, a lot of times I, yeah, I even roll my eyes when I say, when my therapist says, well, maybe this is an opportunity. But when you learn to find your own solutions, there's no better feeling. When you really, when I, when I can only speak for me, though, when I find that thing and I say, wait a second, this is a chance for me to grow. And I get that through my work with my therapist. A therapist can help you become a better problem solver, and that makes it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small. And it's something I get to work on every single week. Uh, And it helps me to flourish. It positively impacts the people in my life. And it's a resource I would not want to do without. That's one of the reasons... I try to recommend therapy to people in my personal life uh, as a resource, too. So if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. Get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey and switch therapists anytime. When you want to be a better problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash sleep with me to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash sleep with me. Check it out. Thanks, everybody.